In this sponsored tutorial, I'm going to show you five things that you may not know you can do in your domain registrar account. And my name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. If you like this kind of video, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And we're getting started right now. One of the most important things you do with a domain registrar, which you already know, is buy domains. And Namecheap is a great one to use. And when you buy domains at Namecheap, if you go to the domain search, there's something you may not have known. And that is if we look up WP Learning Lab, which is a taken domain, wplearnlab.com, we can make an offer. So see the domain we want is taken. We can make an offer to see if that person or that owner or that corporation or whoever owns the domain will be willing to sell it to us for whatever we offer them. In addition to making offers on domains that are taken, there's also Domain Marketplace. If we check that out, and this is a list of domains that are for sale right now. You can buy any one of these. Bettercars.org, that's a pretty good one. Bettercomputer.org. My feeling is this is the same person who's selling all these. There are some quality domains that you could be able to pick up this way. Something that you may not have known is for SEO, an older domain is better. An older domain with trust that hasn't been marked as spam or had manual action taken against it by Google is good for SEO. And a lot of times when you're building, say, a private blog network, you would buy a domain from an auction. You first say bettercars.org. You would look this up in Moz and in other tools to see if it has any domain age, to see if it has any backlinks to it, any trust factor. And quite often, you can pick up some pretty good domains that are great for ranking quickly because they already have trust in Google because they were existing websites that are now being sold or that businesses that went out of business and they're just selling the domain. Whatever the case, you can buy domains that are aged, have backlinks to them, and you can usually get them relatively inexpensively for the amount of SEO power they provide. But that's a pretty deep topic and that's a discussion for another day. Suffice it to say, you can buy domain names through these auction type listings. Something that domain registrars offer as well is the who is guard. And what this does is it hides who bought the domain. So normally if you buy a domain under your name or your company name, your information is listed in the who is database. If you have who is guard, it's removed. Instead of, if you buy through Namecheap, instead of having your information, it would have Namecheap's information there. The difference between Namecheap's who is and most others is Namecheap provides it for free. As of this recording, some other domain registrars I just checked are still charging $10 or more per year for this service. And at Namecheap, it's now free forever. So that's pretty awesome. Something else you can get through your domain registrar is an SSL certificate. This is a hot topic lately because Google, a little while ago now, has made so sites with SSLs are ranked a little bit higher. Gets us, gives you a small SEO boost. And if we go to SSL certificates here, you will notice that in Namecheap and most other domain registrars, they charge for their SSLs. And that is because these are not Let's Encrypt SSLs. These are true SSLs the way they've always been. The Let's Encrypt SSL, which you can often get for free through your host, is not supported everywhere. If we take a look at this blog post here, this is a post I found on Let's Encrypt community website, and it's basically highlighting the fact that Let's Encrypt is not supported everywhere. This is still an ongoing thing in 2019, and older browsers don't support it. And maybe you don't want to support them on your site. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But all I'm saying is Let's Encrypt does not work for everybody but the SSLs that you find here are compatible with everybody, but they're not free. So which one you choose is up to you, but you can get these ones quite often through a domain registrar like Namecheap. Back into my account, my dashboard, and go to my domain list. And if I go to manage the domain, if I scroll down a bit, I see one of the options I have is to redirect the domain. For example, for my own brand, anybody's brand really, it would be smart to buy all the TLD variations, TLD meaning top level domain, which is what comes after the dot. So TLD for this domain is .club. .com is the most popular one, most famous one. Anything after the dot is a TLD. It would be smart to buy all of the TLDs with your brand name in it and then redirect them to your main site because you don't want somebody else buying it. So you can do that through the redirect domain right here. You can very easily add a redirect that goes from the .club to, let's say, .com because that's the main site. So there we go, we now have a redirect. If now someone tries to access wplearnlab.club, it goes to the main website. You can do something very similar for email. If you're hosting email in this domain, you can have it redirected elsewhere. 
if we go to sharing and transfer, something that's critical in a domain registrar account is being able to transfer domains. I've encountered a lot of cases where web designers buy a domain and then build a website for a client on that domain, but it's not actually their brand. It's the client's brand, but they own the domain. So then the migration and transfer is how the designer or the web developer can transfer the domain to the client after the site's done, and then the ownership is then correct. And I've seen over the years a couple times where the relationship between the client and the designer has soured, or the designer disappears, and they still have ownership of the domain. And the client can't get the domain into their account. So they're not, they don't technically own the domain because they never transferred that initially. So this is something you should be on top of. If you have someone else buying domains for you, been designing websites for you, get them to transfer it to you. Or if you're designing for others, transfer it to them. Just to have your hands clean and just have that out of the way right away. Very important feature of a domain registrar is the advanced DNS or any kind of DNS. Here is where we add things like CNAME records, URL redirects, which we just created. And the most important thing I think that you add in here, or the two most important things, is name servers for a hosting account. So if you buy a domain here and you want to host with SiteGround, for example, you would add the SiteGround name servers into here. And if you're hosting with someone like WP Engine, instead of adding name servers here, you'd add an A record. The name servers would stay with the domain registrar. And you can also add MX records. MX records are for your email. And one of the most popular email services out there, G Suite, um, Office 360, Rackspace, all these guys, they can function and they do function with MX records. And I like to keep the MX records with the domain in the domain registrar because if you have it in a hosting account and then you transfer hosting accounts, but you forget to create the MX records on the new host, which I've done more than once, your email stops working until you fix that, until you have the MX records transferred over. Whereas if you have the MX records in your domain registrar account and you transfer hosts, your email keeps on working. It's totally unaffected because the MX records are still there with your domain. If you transfer your domain to a different domain registrar, then you have to transfer the MX records as well or recreate them in the new domain registrar. But I think that's less common, transferring domains, than switching hosts. So I like to keep my MX records with my domain registrar for that reason. To recap, the five things you can do with your domain registrar that you may not have known, you can make an offer on someone else's domain. If they accept it, you get their domain. You can buy domains in their marketplace. You can buy WhoisGuard, which is free with Namecheap. You can buy SSL certificates. You can migrate and transfer domains to other parties. And you can configure the DNS settings. Most importantly for me is the name servers and the MX records in the DNS. So those are the five things you can do in your domain registrar account. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my awesome videos. And next up is clicking this video right up here, which is the top 10 security mistakes I see in WordPress over and over. Make sure you're not making these. Watch that video up there. And down here, this video explains why you're likely going to get hacked. Watch that one next. It's important. And I'm Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.